Hello viewers, my name is Mr. Kazim and I am delighted to welcome you to my YouTube channel at Smart Ed TV. Here you will find detailed tutorials on your science courses and tips on how to answer examination questions successfully. I started this channel to also share my knowledge and experience in this field and to give you tips on how to succeed as a university student. If you are looking for detailed tutorials on physics subjects, chemistry, mathematics, biology, statistics, and general studies, GST, then you have come to the right channel. So therefore, sit back, relax, and join me on this journey. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to never miss on an important update. Please remember to also share this video so that others can benefit. Thank you very much. Good day viewers. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be looking at experimental physics. These are some of the things we are used to from our secondary school days with lead to modification. Talking about experimental physics, we are trying to look at how we report experimental laboratory work, how we put it down in form of what experiments. There are some terms we are going to be used to under about experimental physics. And some of those terms include number one, readings, number two, measurements, number three, error, number four, mistake, number five, precision. And the last one, number six, accuracy. So these are some of the terms we are going to encounter in experimental physics. Let's start with the first one, readings. What do we mean by reading? A reading is simply a single determination of the value of an unknown quantity. A single determination of the value of an unknown quantity. That's reading. For measurement, what do we mean by measurement? Measurement is simply the result of the analysis of different readings. The result of the analysis of different, of different readings is called measurement. The third one, error. What is an error? Error is simply the difference between the measured value and the actual value. The difference between the measured value in an experiment and the original value, the actual value, or the true value. That is what we mean by what? Error. In an experiment, error is allowed. Why? Nobody is what? Perfect. There is no way we are going to perform experiment without what? Making error. So error is allowed in experimental physics. The next we are going to look at is mistake. What is a mistake? A mistake is a total deviation from the actual theory of an experiment. The total deviation from the actual theory of an experiment is known as mistake. In experimental physics, mistake is not allowed. Mistake is not what? Allowed. Error is allowed in experimental physics but a mistake is not allowed. The next one, we look at precision. What do we mean by what? Precision. Precision simply means the closeness of measured what? Of measured values. How our measured values, how they are closely related to one another. When we, when we perform an experiment, and maybe in form of what? In a given experiment, and we now discover that the first result gives, let's say, 
35.25. When the second reading gave, let's say, 35.30, we can see that these guys are what precise reading. Why? They are what they are closely related. So that's what we mean by what precision. How two or more measured values are closely related. The next we are going to look at is accuracy. What do we mean by accuracy? Accuracy is simply the closeness of measured value to the standard value. How close is a measured value to the standard value? That is what we mean by accuracy. So these are some of the terms we are going to be encountered in experimental physics. Are we together? So the next we are going to look at, after understanding the basis of what experimental physics, we are going to look at uh, classification of errors. How do we classify error in experimental physics? Generally, there are two major classifications of error. We can classify errors into two. The first one being classification, classification of error. So we said about we can classify error into two. The first one being what systematic error. And the second one being random error. What is systematic error? Systematic error is an uncertainty in the measurement of experimental value that occur for 40 apparatus. This type of error is to occur when the instrument or the apparatus we are using to perform that experiment is faulty. So this type of error is called systematic error. They occur due to what fault in apparatus. There are different sources of what systematic error. There are different sources of systematic error. Those errors we are talking about, they can come from different sources. And those sources are collectively called uh, PZ. These are the what, sources of what? Systematic error. The P stands for the personal error from the observer. This error we are talking about, it can be from personal error from the observer. The Z, it can be from zero error. The E, it can be error due to wrong assumptions. And the last E is the error due to what? Instruments. What do we mean by zero error? For instance, in an experiment, I'm in the laboratory and I wanted to what? Measure. Let's look at this. So let's assume this is my what? Stopwatch. Let's assume this is my what? Stopwatch. I'm using this stopwatch in the laboratory. But and I notice that before using the Instruments. The pointer of what of that stopwatch is not resting at point zero. Let's assume it's resting at point, let's say, eight or nine. This pointer is resting at what point nine, point nine before using that instrument at all. It simply means that this type of instrument, if I use it in to what to make readings in an experiment. Is going to increase my value by positive 9. It is going to increase my value by what? Positive 9. Why? Before using this, this instrument, I expect the pointer to be, to be resting, to be at the zero point, at the zero mark. But we notice that it is not resting at the zero mark, but rather pointing at, let's say, the 9 mark. So it simply means that if I use this type of instrument to make Measurement is going to what affect that value by what adding nine. For instance, if this instrument measures let's say twelve, let's say twelve seconds. 
if it measures 12 seconds. A cycling is that what? That 12 seconds is not the what? The actual 12 seconds. We have to subtract this 9. So that 12 minus 9 will now give us 3. So the original measurement is going to be what? 3 seconds. But because it's not resting at the zero mark, that is why it increases the value by 12 seconds. So that is what we mean by zero error. So in the laboratory, if you notice that the instrument you are using is not resting on the zero mark, so the best is to what? Change that instrument. Or you have to be careful while using this type of instrument so that in your own measurement, you take note of this value. You reduce this value from the what? Final result. From this 12, just say 12 minus 9. So that you have what? 3 seconds. So this 3 seconds is the what? Actual reading from that instrument. That is what we mean by what? Zero error. So these are what? Uh, sources of systematic error. Don't forget, we see that what? The sources of systematic error, they are combined as what? PZ. BFP is the personal error. The Z is the zero error. The first E is the error due to, error due to what? Wrong assumption. And the next we are going to look at is the random error. So let me clean this. Random error. What do we mean by random error? So random error are uncertainties in the measurement made by the observer. They are uncertainties in the measurement made by the observer.